Oh, it's a page turner. I'm Anita Joyce here with Kelly Wilkness, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks, episode 374, Decor Magazines to Explore. And today, we're going to be talking about some of our favorite decorating magazines. And for this episode, it required a field trip, didn't it, Kelly? A field trip and then homework, and it was I know. awesome. <laughs> I know, but no buses, um, you know, no... <laughs> Although I did do all this on pen and paper, unlike, you know, a lot of my research. But it was so fun going to Barnes & Noble to find some magazines I love. Oh, yeah. Well, I got mine at the grocery store, uh, but I had to go to a couple to get the ones that I wanted um, because I wanted to have a nice array of things that I have enjoyed in the past and I enjoy now. So I revisited a couple of things uh, that I haven't purchased in a while. But we just thought this would be such fun to go through the magazines that still exist because everyone's bemoaning, Mm -hmm. you know, the fall of the printed page in so many areas and particularly home decor magazines, which not everyone feels are as essential as we feel they are. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the magazines are trying to go digital, but... I'm not so sure, and after you listen to what I found, you might not be so sure that the people who are enjoying home decor are really interested in enjoying it in a digital fashion. So I figured I would do a little research because, you know, I like to find out, you know, sort of the background of lots of things that we talk about. And so I wanted to find out, had there been any research done about why people like to hold glossy magazines in their hands and enjoy them that way, because that's certainly the way I like to enjoy them. And I did find a survey done by Freeport Press, and they are a, you know, a big printing company. So you know they have a, a hand, a foot, a, you know, a stake in this. But they surveyed over a thousand North American consumers, just asked them um, 14 survey questions. And the long and the short of it was that people still prefer to read a good home decor glossy magazine. Mm -hmm. Well, that makes sense to me because there's just something about holding it in your hand and the photos are beautiful and you've got a nice large photo to look at. Whereas if you're looking at it on your phone, the pictures are just too small. And if you're looking at it on the computer, then you're stuck sitting at the desk or whatever, holding your laptop. So I really get the the interest in having the magazine. And I love having a stack of some of my favorite magazines. And when I go on a trip or when I go someplace, I love taking that, uh, some of my favorites with me. Oh, me too. So just a few things that I'll highlight from the survey. So they found that uh, people read the print magazines more in general. They read the articles longer. They subscribed more often to print than digital. And um, they also found that people, even if they were a, are a fan of the print version, they don't really translate over to the social media that oh, the magazine will have. So, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of them have all kinds of social media, and, you know, in particular Instagram. But people are like, Mm-mm, no, I don't really do that. I like it for this purpose. And I think... Part of it may also be because they had a ton of comments that people were allowed to just elaborate on what they were saying, Uh, because basically the questions were broken down and then to the percentages of people. Uh, But people were saying it's particularly in our niche in the home decor, it's an escape, you know, so... If you are a person who works on your computer a lot or you're doing your bills on your computer, whatever you do, sometimes a computer feels like a job. And the light, yes, because exactly. I mean, right, so I, you get a break from that and you get to go sit on your couch. <laughs> when I finish working, I don't want to look at the computer. And I can't tell you how many times. I mean, it happens all the time that I'll say, okay, I've got to stop working. I'm going to take a break. And then whatever it is I need to do, I'm like back on the computer. Oh, yes. I need to buy this thing. Oh, well, I'm back on the computer. Yes. I need to check on this. Well, I'm back on the computer. So. It's crazy. I know, isn't it? Right. It's hard to get off of it. So I love I love when I can sit down with a beautiful magazine. It's truly a, just such a, a joy and, for the most part, a pretty inexpensive one, really. 
Exactly. So we figured you all agreed with us because, you know, we're all kindred spirits who are here in the DTT community. And then we were happy to find that there were a lot of other people out in the world who are feeling the same way. So we thought it'd be fun today to go through some magazines that we have found, you know, on our field trips and um, just let you know about them. Maybe some of them you don't even know about, or you'll see them and you're not sure if you're going to enjoy it. So maybe you just pick up a tried and true copy of something you've been reading for years. So we're going to explore a few. And certainly if you have any magazines that you love and that are available mostly everywhere, let us know in an email. And, uh, you know, we'd like to explore those and then share those on an upcoming episode. Right. And so I really didn't go for the ones that I think everyone has seen at the end cap at the grocery store that are there all the time, because I feel like everybody knows uh, certain magazines. So Mm -hmm. yeah, so I tried to go a little bit off-road, although I'm sure you've heard of all of these, but they're not as, as common, I guess, as some. Right. Okay, so let's kick it off. This is one, actually, we didn't tell each other what we were going to get. Um, We just figured if there was generally some overlap, there would be overlap. But there really wasn't that much overlap, to tell you the truth. Just this one magazine. um, And I'll let Anita start off by telling you about it. Well, it's Milieu, and it is a beautiful magazine. This one is rings in at $7.99. And I like to also notice what kind of paper it's on. And this one is really nice paper. It's nice, thicker paper and good quality. So you really feel like you're getting a lot for your money on Isn't this one. Isn't it interesting how that makes a difference? Is that the, it's like clay-based paper, right? Or is that still what it is, clay-based? I remember you know, reading about that years ago because there are certain magazines just feels flimsy. It almost feels like newspaper-like. And like, oh God. No. Well, so I worked at a paper mill. Uh, yes, we so, know. So you <laughs> must so, know the details so, on this. Uh, well, uh, I mean, there are different types of paper, and actually, it's been so long now, I'm trying to think. But really, I think the biggest difference is going to be maybe the the brightness of the paper, mm-hmm. and then really the thickness of the paper. It's all coated paper. So, uh, you know, so you're, it's all going to have that in common, but there's definitely mm-hmm. a lot of varieties as far as the thickness and and just the quality of the paper. But the thickness, I think, is the biggest thing that's going to go into. And the covers, you notice some covers are a lot heavier than other covers. Mm -hmm. So this feels like a luxury magazine to me. Definitely. Definitely does. And that's when you like wanting to hold a glossy magazine in your hand. Well, this is the definite, you know, like this is in fact a glossy magazine. Um, It is published for uh, four times a year. So there are not too many issues, but I, you know, it's something that I think if you enjoy home decor, you're going to really look forward to, uh, you know, it arriving on your doorstep or seeing it on your newsstand. Uh, two years is twenty nine ninety five. I didn't see a one year option, but I'm sure you could get that. And as Anita said, the cover price was seven ninety nine. Um, the founder and editor is a woman named Pamela Pierce. She is a designer and. She is in the Houston area. So I have encouraged Anita to befriend Pamela. I'll see if I can run into her over at Whole Foods or something. Just casually, <laughs> maybe have several copies of Milieu in your cart <laughs> and bump into her and tell her what we think about her magazine. Now, I, I knew, I mean, I think I've actually used this word in my lifetime, but I was like, gee, let me just find out exactly what that means. So a milieu is a person's social environment. Oh, interesting. So it's kind of well, like the term you know, milieu. Yeah. Yeah. So right. it's kind of like, mm-hmm. you know, I, I guess in loosely it's like field, the social her, her area. or cultural, yeah. you know, environment, the a community that you kind of circulate in. So it's kind of a, a sort of a general term, but it, and it has this little Frenchy flair to it. Uh, so it is derived from the French. Right. And the other thing I wanted to say about the paper or the magazine in general is that this is more of a high-end one because some of them are more rustic, more lower end, and this one's more of a high-end one. And so some of the things in there are probably not going to be something that you're want to, going to want to go out and buy. But I love these high-end magazines. If, for- you're, if your children want to go to college. Well, right. You probably right. won't want to buy that sofa. Well, right. So what I get from these types of magazines are inspirational ideas. Yes. And so this is where I usually go to get some great ideas. And then I'll say, 
uh, if I see something I really love, I'll think, how can I create something similar to that? It's not going to set me back $20,000 for a sofa. Exactly. But so mm-hmm. much of what we were talking about in one of our very recent episodes, the um, high style, low cost, this is educating you on what the high end looks like. Right. So then you can just, what Anita said, translate that $20,000 sofa into you know a $2,000 sofa or right. find it exactly. on Craigslist for $500 or something like that. So it definitely, uh, yeah, yeah, it's not like dog ear and like, oh, I'm going to run to, uh, you know, Pottery Barn and get that. That's not that kind of magazine. No, 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 no. No, and and they have a lot of vintage and antique things in here. I thought it was a beautiful mix of antiques and modern pieces, and it was just nicely done. I There were quite a few stories in here. Some of these magazines are kind of short on content. This one was very rich, full of content. I felt the same way. I learned mm. so much about the bent chairs. Did you read that article? I thought it was so interesting. Well, I'm going to have to go back and read that it's, one. And you know what's nice about the articles in there? And again, you know, this is the first time I ever picked it up. I've seen it before, obviously not too many times because only four times a year. But, you know, then I didn't get it and it was gone. But the, for this, you know, investigative journalism that we were doing to prepare for the podcast, I purchased it. So I don't know if every time this is how the articles were, but I liked that they were concise enough where, you know, you weren't like, oh God, you know, the dog's barking or, you know, somebody's at the door like, I can't finish this and I'm never going to finish this article. They were kind of like a page, a page and a half maybe. And then you, and you learned something, which I love. It wasn't just fluff and utter like, oh, this designer picked this cerulean blue because of this. It actually educated you on a type of furniture or a style or something like that. So I thought it was very well written as well as being beautiful. Right. And to me, another sign of a good magazine is when the ads are as beautiful as the oh, features. Yes. Were the you going nuts over those the the wallpaper mural ad in the beginning? S- stunning. Of stunning. the magazine? Yeah. I thought it was very similar in a vibe to Veranda. What is yes. this, would you say? Oh, yes, very much so. Okay. Very much so. Yeah. Yeah. And then okay, like so there we're was... gushing. We're so gushing over this mm-hmm. one. We're never going to get onto something else. Do you oh, have okay. anything else? No, go ahead. No, just I something. just want to say real fast. I mean, they had Chris Tomlin's home in Franklin, Tennessee, Lulu Little's home in London. It was beautiful, full of color and pattern. There was a, the Park Avenue home of a former ambassador to Italy. That was full of, just rich, of richly full of colors and patterns. That was beautiful. And then they had uh, and, and the English story about the company that creates old style kitchens. Oh, a stone, right? Remember, like you could create Mrs. Patmore's kitchen. Yeah, yeah, home. yeah. I think of it's, course they're called Sewn Britain or Sewn yes, something yes, like that. Yes. yes, and that's in the UK, so probably not available in the US. But a nice mix mm-hmm. because definitely that house in Nashville was, you know, where it was absolutely stunning and so mm-hmm. well done. And their designer was like the most gorgeous woman I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. She was lovely. But, you know, that was somewhat attainable, whereas the others were, you know, like, whoa, uh, you know, this Park Avenue apartment, but all a little bit different. So depending on what you were drawn to, um, you would definitely find something that you really enjoy. And let me just throw this thought out there because it, it, one of the th- thoughts I got from looking at the magazines is if you were on a low budget, one way you could – I think one of the best ways to create a rich look in your house is to go with a deep, rich color on the walls. And a lot of these homes had a lot of deep, rich color on the walls. So I just was going to throw that little decorating tip out there for today. Interesting. Yes, I think that's really true. That's a really good idea. And now that we're adding color, that might be something that people are open to doing now. So let's move on. Speaking Mm -hmm. of color, let's move Mm -hmm. on to Flower Magazine. Now, if you saw Flower Magazine on the shelves, you might think, oh, it's all about flowers, right? That's what I would guess. Or growing flowers. But it Mm -hmm. really isn't. Um, I was introduced to this actually... I think by Shirley, our friend Shirley told me Mm -hmm. about Flower Magazine a couple of years ago. And I said, how could I have missed this? It's been around since 2007. Um, They come out with six issues a year. The cover price is $5.99. They have a gift thing going now where two subscriptions for $30. So, you know, that'd be a nice thing for the holidays or whatever as a gift. But the editor-in-chief of this one is Margot Shaw. And I did recently hear a podcast episode, and I can't remember the podcast it was on, uh, uh, an interviewer, uh, they interviewed her, and it was very interesting. She was 
you know, not a floral designer for all of her life long. She was doing her daughter's wedding and then just became so entranced with the idea of floral designing. She started to study it and then she couldn't find a magazine to really fuel her passion. So she created one. Like she totally sounds like our kind of girl. So. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And so, and she's in uh, Birmingham, Alabama, I think is where they're based out of. And they refer to the, themselves as a luxury lifestyle or floral lifestyle magazine. Mm-hmm. Um, to describe the vibe, I would say if Victoria shed its doilies, you know, Victoria magazine, <laughs> and then had a baby with House Beautiful. <laughs> The House Beautiful prior to this past year. Um, Yes, that would be Flower Magazine. It's lush. It's heavy into flowers, but has lots of homes. But as you would imagine, each of the homes will have, you know, if the dining room is depicted, it'll have this incredible floral arrangement on it. And I think Mm. there's always uh, some tutorial about creating some incredibly gorgeous floral design with, you know, sort of protea and artichokes or something, you know, mm-hmm, just some, mm-hmm. not just plopping things in a vase. Um, but definitely I think, um, th- the homes are very high end as well, but it seems like a little bit more of a, an approachable right, magazine right. than milieu maybe, but still very high end. Um, and just so lush in all the colors. I mean, how can you go wrong when every right. third page is, you know, filled with beautiful flowers? So it's really enjoyable. I mean, you know, just a lovely thing to sit down with a cup of tea or coffee or wine or whatever and just go through each page and relish it. That sounds so you. That does not surprise me that you chose a magazine called Flowers. <laughs> it was a flowers? Flower. Flower. Mm-hmm. And it's not going to surprise you that one of my favorite magazines is Country French Magazine. There you go. No surprises here. <laughs> no, We're no. completely transparent. I know, I know. And this is this is one, it's a little bit more, it's $12.99, but again, very high quality materials go into this magazine. And this is by Meredith, and this is the one that, that my house was in in this magazine. And uh, although my, I would not describe my house as high end, uh, they do have mostly high end homes in here, but there's some that are not, some that are kind of more attainable style, which I would definitely say my, my house is. So uh, this magazine has uh, usually, this is, this is probably pretty typical. It had some California homes. It had a couple of homes from Arizona, a a beautiful South Carolina home, a Houston home. For some reason, there's uh, country French is so popular in Houston. So I'm not surprised there's usually one uh, from Houston and then New Orleans, of course, there's going to be a beautiful home there that's with French style, but they also throw in a few homes from France. And I love that they do that because as much as I love seeing French style in U.S. homes, I want to see it in its native environment mm, as well. True. So I love, there was one in the south of France, and then there was a hunting lodge that in the Dordogne re- region that was transformed into a home. So you're going to see a lot of, be- you know, beautiful rustic beams. You're going to see some stone walls, and you're really going to see that rusticness mixed with the French. And so it's a, it's a very elegant but very approachable, very warm vibe that you're going to get from this magazine. And really, it's one of my favorites. And it's just very well done. Now, is that one of the specialty magazines or is that a monthly? That is a specialty. And actually, they only come out once a year. Now, the in the fall, that's when their new issue is. There is a spring issue, but the spring issue is a repeat of the fall. Oh, I see. So they repeat. So the spring is the same exact. It's exact. And they used again. to do a different cover on it. But then people, I think, got upset because they thought it was a new issue and bought used to buy it, and it was the same one. So now they stick with the same cover, but it's the same one. Okay. Well, mm-hmm. I don't. I think that that's a very fine idea to stick with the same cover because I wonder if other people have had the same issue come up. Well, you and get excited yeah. to buy something, right? Or, or and I, I remember it happening to me with maybe I used to read one of the I don't know, I can't remember which one it was, but. They would do a specialty publication and you would think it was going to be all new content, but really what they had done is basically culled, culled from maybe the, oh, the 12 right. or 10 mm-hmm. issues that came out of the year and you'd be flipping through and you'd spend like twelve ninety five dollars for it or something. Wait a minute. And you'd be like, wait a minute, I've seen all this already. And, they, <laughs> right. and there's even less to it because they took mm-hmm. the articles out. And so it's right. just pictures of stuff I've already seen and paid for. 
Wait, right. wait so it's, it's well worth it, but really there's just one new issue a year. No, but that's a good way mm-hmm. to do it. It's fine to reintroduce it and definitely well worth it. But you you do have to be careful of some of those. I don't know if anybody else is still doing that, but for well, a while that was with, happening. With books too, because with my second edition of my book, I really wanted to change out the cover. But the more I thought about it, I thought I do not want people getting upset thinking it's a brand new book when it's not. Uh, it's just right. updated. Right. So in the end, I mean, I talked to my publisher and we decided to keep the same picture because I just want to make sure, pe- sure people knew right. it's the same thing, but just updated. So there you yeah. go. Yeah. You have to be careful because you sure, sure don't want uh, you know people upset that they feel like they're paying for something that they're not getting. Don't you just love a great recommendation from a friend? Well, we're delighted to be recommending these companies and their wonderful products to you today. And let them know your friends at DTT sent you. Go ahead, clean out your closet, then head straight to Quince. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor, and I can really recommend their Ultra Stretch Super Wide Leg Pant at $49.90. The price is unbeatable, and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with Quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with Quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365-day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365-day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. BritBox just keeps getting better. The new Archie is amazing. And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story, the dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting, but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter, Jennifer Grant, and ex-wife, Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing. And it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off. Yes, that's 50% off your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com. Okay, so I guess I can go next with Mm -hmm. House and Home. House and Home is a Canadian publication. Oh, nice. Yeah, but I find it in my local... Ralph's grocery store all the time. The editor is a woman named Emma uh, Reddington. It comes out 12 times a year at $6.99 on the cover price. And they have um, $23.95 for the year, $29.95 if you want the digital. Now, speaking of the digital, House and Home seems to be have a, a very strong foothold in digital or they're making efforts in in the digital area more than I'm seeing the other magazines. Like so much of it is on each page and talking about what's here and then, you know, what else you can get online and what you can view digitally and all of that. So, you know, that it's not necessarily what we're talking about, like loving to hold it in your hand, but I think you get all of it in the print edition too. And it might just be the same thing in digital, or maybe they augmented a little bit, but I haven't explored the digital. Um, 
to be perfectly honest with you, the pages are a little busy for me based on that because there's just a lot of information, which is good. But I don't, I, if I'm reading it and I'm sitting down to relax with it, I don't want to know what I could find out on my iPad. Like I want to see what's right there. You know what I'm saying? So there's just a lot of information about how you can go to the digital section or, and enjoy it that way. And it also has recipes, which you know, I guess I'm just really not into when I'm reading a decor magazine. I mean, I remember years and years ago when I was so into Martha Stewart living and I couldn't wait for it to come out. Oh, yes. Yeah. I mean, just couldn't wait. And um, I loved everything. I loved her schedule. And, you know, if Martha was raking leaves on October 4th, I wanted to be raking leaves on <laughs> October 4th. You know, if Martha was making stew, you know, from her Polish grandmother's recipe box or something, I was like, I'm going to try it. You know, like I loved it all. But I think at this point, like I, I, I look other places for my recipes and actually I do look online a lot for recipes. So I'm not well, necessarily wanting online, that in my decor magazine. Yeah, I think online, I still... I love the ease of finding a recipe online. So for yeah. recipes, I think online is a fabulous place to go. And the world is your oyster. You can get millions of pumpkin soup recipes right. or whatever it is you want. Right. But for home decor, I agree. I just, to me, it's a little different because right. the pictures are everything. Right. So I'm not so interested in that. Um it's very fresh. It's very contemporary. It's very sort of now and colorful. Uh, and, and so I like that about it. And again, it's kind of interesting because it is, you know, it's, it's our Canadian neighbors, but it is a different take. Um, you may be disappointed if you're like, oh, I love that pillow. Where can I get that? And you'd have to go to Toronto. Oh. Um, so, you know, that might bum you out, but it's definitely worth a look. And at, you know, $6.99 for the cover price, I, you know, I would suggest you could, could you give it a whirl. Okay. Well, the next one that I looked at was El Decor. I see their website a lot online, but I really haven't looked at their magazine a lot. So uh, this was something I hadn't really done in a long time to sit down with one of their magazines. I found some wonderful uh, inspirational photos in the back of the magazine. There was a townhouse in Savannah that was beautiful and a very over the top Hollywood home. Uh, lots of drama, lots of Hollywood, uh, you know, just so interesting, so over the top, mm -hmm. but very in, in a very interesting, fascinating way. So I loved the features in the magazine and it's about five ninety nine. It is very, very nice paper. It's very thick. The thing I did not like about it was it was chock full of ads. So it took a while to get to the to the content, the meat of it, right? So it's yes. thick, but you got a lot of ads. There were a lot of ads, mm -hmm. so a little more than I cared to see in my magazine. So, mm -hmm. but it was, but you know, it was big. So, right, you know, I know, but sometimes that's just wearying. You'd rather have it be smaller. <laughs> yes, yes, right, yes. So, yeah, that's how they're paying for that nice quality paper. That's what I was going to say. That's why. Well, and that's why it was five ninety nine. I think because it had a lot of ads, right. Okay, so this is one I only read one other time because my friend's house was in it. Mm -hmm. Dwell. Oh, okay. Now, this is, you know, for people who are listening here, and I know we have people who like all different styles, uh, but I think Dwell would probably be the least percentage of decorating tips and tricks listeners would be necessarily like immediately drawn to the stylistic look and feel of Dwell Magazine, but I suggest to you just to look at it once or twice or a magazine like it because it does push your boundaries a little bit and it just makes you sort of appreciate other looks and, um, you know, maybe get some sort of inspiration. Not that you're going to copy it, you know, piece by piece in any means, but it's a very interesting magazine. My friend's house was, well, it was built by a fairly renowned mid-century architect, but the place had fallen into like incredible ruin. And they had bought it years ago and this beautiful piece of property in a nearby city, that I, the city I used to live in, and sort of up on a hill. And so they, over the course of time, renovated it. And it's, it's amazing. I mean, it's basically like a compound and the, the way the gardens work with the house and stuff. And it, it's not really my look because it is very mid-century, but it's so sort of earthy and just 
is so right for the location. Mm -hmm. And a lot oh. of the homes mm -hmm. in Dwell are like that. It's a lot of it is about um, smart design, sustainability, sort of, you know, edgy materials, modern look. So it's really interesting. There was, I was reading a very interesting article about the power of light in there. And, you know, it's, I'm so concerned about the light bulbs. You know, the, the, the death of the pink light bulb has really got me in a frenzy and a tailspin. And, you know, what's going to happen with all these LEDs? And this article actually made me feel pretty good about where we're going with all of that. Oh. Um, I think Dwell might take itself a little seriously, you know, mm -hmm. for like just sitting down and having a <laughs> cup of tea and a glass of wine uh, and trying to enjoy it. Like even the picture of the editor, which is the only boy, the only man editor in all the magazines that I looked at, he's just like this guy. William Hanley, super serious looking. Mm -hmm. he is, well, he is that's like, a serious name. He's got to yes. stand up to yeah, hold exactly. up to that, you know, serious name. And it comes out six times a year. Um, and it, I it, let me see what I don't didn't write it down the price cover prices of this. It has a fun feel, like the the, mm -hmm. the cover is it's really nice quality, but it's more matte, you know, which is mm -hmm. very modern. Oh yeah, that's um, a nice look. Mm -hmm. It's eight ninety nine. Okay, but I'm gonna try it. I don't know if I would tell anyone just to run out and get a subscription of that. I would try it first, but it's cool. And they have houses from all over the globe. Okay. So my next one is one I think that we both really love, and that is Veranda. Yes, I do. Yeah, I know. Well, I knew this is one of your favorites, and it's been one of my favorites for a long time. This is another high-end magazine, and it's only five ninety nine. dollars Very nice paper. I'm always surprised at that. Yeah, it's really a good price. Don't for tell what them, you... but I would pay more. <laughs> well, I know. I, I agree with you. I think it's a great price. And it was so full of just beautiful articles. There was a, a Manhattan apartment with these dark brooding wall colors like we talked about before. An article on Elsie DeWolf. Ooh. Uh, yes. And then it showed a photo of one of her rooms from her home in Versailles, France, which I didn't even know she had one there. Hmm. Uh, an article, Rule Britan Britannia, about mm -hmm. the English design scene. Yeah. Which, you know, I, I love that. I love the English. Even though my style is French, I love English style. I just adore it. Uh, so I, I love that they cover the English um, decorating, what's going on there. And then they had a neoclassical home in the Hudson Valley. And this was interesting. This particular home that they featured in this, uh, in this issue was full of, because it's neoclassical, it was full of kind of 18th century style furniture. So guess what? The, the dining room was full of Chippendale chairs, the same mm. chairs that everyone else is getting rid of. Ah! So I found it. <laughs> so I they, found were, it they were dumpster diving. <laughs> yeah. So I found it interesting that the house was full of a lot of the of mahogany furniture that other people are getting rid of. That and here you so go. Funny. But I know why they did it. I mean, the house is from that time period. And so they wanted to have uh, furniture consistent with that style of the home. So I think it works in this home. Uh, I don't think this means that it's coming back, but I think it just made sense for this particular home and it was well done. Uh, so anyway, that's interesting. And then let's see, there was an Atlanta home. And the interesting thing here, this Atlanta home that they featured had a bathroom with black subway tile, which doesn't sound good, but it was actually quite beautiful. What color grout did they use? You know, I don't remember. I'll have to go back and look. And then they had Charlotte Moss's uh, Manhattan townhouse. Oh, you yeah. know, when you whenever you get a stack of magazines, like Charlotte just appears. She's going to be somewhere. I know. She was in I a know. couple of the ones I was doing. The only one I didn't think she was actually in was House and Home and Dwell. I think she was mentioned at, at some point in, <laughs> in one of them. She's the queen. Yeah. Yes. And, and all of the other ones. Um, okay. So a beloved magazine of mine for years and years and years, and certainly not for the hundred years that it's been around, but you know, for a long enough time in my life, I have been enjoying House Beautiful. Oh, uh, I, I love think, House Beautiful. Yeah. Too. I think yeah. once I sort of had my fill of Martha um, and her jadeite and everything, not that I, you know, <laughs> not that I'm anti-Martha. I was just like, I, my cup runneth over. Mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. I think I turned to House Beautiful. So it's mm -hmm. been, you know, some, quite some time. And that would be my go-to. Um, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll always buy that one if I see it. I, I don't really, I don't know why I don't subscribe. It just doesn't come in the mail. Um, but I, I think I kind of like to buy it when I see it out and then I like, I'm treating myself. I'm I already planning in my head when I'm going to read but it. But it's right? kind of fun to go out and get them too. It's kind of a good excuse. I've got to go buy a magazine for work. Gotta go. Yeah. <laughs> I could have gone to Romans, which is, uh, I think California's, uh, oldest 
bookstore at Mm -hmm. like one of the last remaining bookstores we have it here in Pasadena and they have a wonderful um, selection. So if we ever do this type of episode again, I will go there. Um, But anyway, let's get back to House Beautiful. It's um, America's oldest decorating magazine. As I said, it's been around for about 100 years. Uh, They have 12 issues a year, maybe 11. Sometimes people combine January and February, you know, and I think it's because people are so busy planning for Anita and I's birthday that they just can't get all <laughs> a whole epi, you know, they can't get a well, whole issue is out that. in January. <laughs> just like, okay, let's combine it. So I, you know, don't quote me. It could be 11, maybe 12. So for $15, that's a good deal. Um, Wait a minute, $15 for the whole year? Yeah. Oh, wow. That is good. That was in the little tear. Maybe we need to be th- yeah, yeah, maybe I would get that. I should get that. Then buying it on the stand. It's, but it's only, this might ring in as a least expensive one, $4.99 uh, cover that's price. That's good. Okay. But here's the thing that's going on with there, guys. If you're also an HB reader, what's with all the editorial changes? We've had maybe four different editors in the last two years, maybe less. Ooh. And now there's a new woman. Now, I don't know too much about her, but people are not happy. Well, and there you know, were I many articles probably... that I was reading about how people <laughs> were not happy. <laughs> Rut-row. Yeah. Well, and, you know, clearly it's a tough time for magazines right now. And there's so many going under. So they're probably scrambling to find some magic recipe so they can I know, keep but going. they didn't pay attention to the survey that I... I researched. I mean, it was very easy. I just Googled you know, why oh. people like to hold magazines in their hands. And sure enough, it well, they may up. like to hold them, but you they know don't the pay subscriptions for are down. Yes. Over um, what they used to be. Well, anyway, the new editor and, you know, I, I have nothing against this gal, Joanna Saltz, uh, but there were a few other people. Um, the last one, what was her name? Sophie something or other. She seemed quite darling. I don't know. And uh, Newell, Newell Turner. And then there was that gentleman... Oh gosh, I follow I follow him on IG and I can't remember his name right now. I can picture his face. He's got that really long face. He was the editor for a long time. Then he was gone. Oh, okay. And then then Mr. Turner, then this other lady, Sophie, something or other, and now this Joanna. Um, yeah, people seem not to be loving the changes. Um they even changed the font a little bit. And it's so funny what ruffles people feathers. And people are very upset about the font being changed. Don't change um, my font. <laughs> no, exactly. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, you I could hardly care. tell, but it was mm-hmm. a little change. Um, so they relaunched the magazine, uh, the, the housebeautiful.com portion of the magazine in July. And then she took over as editor uh, of the print magazine as well. Um, so I'm kind of on the fence. Oh, interesting. I don't okay. want to be saddened by this, but... Oh dear. Well, they might come back around. Yeah. Let's not let's not throw them out just yet. No, no, no. It might. And she might be mm-hmm. just, you know, everybody wants to put their own mark on something. So maybe True. she wants to do something a little bit different and then sort of shakes down and you find some place in the middle. Um and then their Instagram is clearly the biggest uh of all of these. Uh two point four million on wow. Instagram. That's large. Uh and the tagline is kind of interesting, like where happiness lives. Like it didn't used hmm. to be that. And I'm like, really? Like, I don't oh. know. That's not really what I think about. Well, I mean, don't that's talk very to them. Nice. They'll try to take ours. Oh, that's true. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> exactly. Shh, don't tell them. Uh, <laughs> one Instagram, which I didn't mention when I was talking about Flower Magazine, that is an Instagram to follow if you like flowers. And I mean, oh. excuse me, who doesn't? Yes, no, everybody does. It's really lovely. Well, speaking of flowers, I know you're going to love this one. And you, this one, I, well, it's Country Living, the British edition. Yeah. You know, so again, all these beautiful homes in the UK. But the other thing about it, I think you would love if you haven't Country seen it in a while. Country Living, the British edition. Yes. It was full I of don't gardens. Think I know this. Well, you know, the English love gardens. So You're full of mysteries. Full of beautiful gardens. But is this the country living that we all know here or different? I, you know, I was flipping through things so quickly and I didn't grab this one. I just looked at it at uh, Barnes and Noble. So I don't know, but I think it is. Oh, okay. All right. Let's, I think it's the same company, but I don't know. But anyway, it did have some beautiful decor in it. Uh, $9.99, if I didn't mention already. Mm-hmm. Uh, recipes, a lot of gardens, but it did have interiors too. So mm-hmm. I thought it was a, a beautiful magazine. You know, just a lot of pretty pictures. But again, if you're just looking for decorating ideas, it had a lot of other stuff in it. So mm-hmm. kind of short on that. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. But beautiful magazine. 
Good, good. And um, just one to toss out there, Sunset, you know, there's a lot of California DTT ladies or gents uh, listening to us. So, you know, I always love to pick up Sunset. It's really not my decorating vernacular, if you will, necessarily not my look. Um, But just I love knowing what's sort of going on and my what I should be doing in my garden and sort of what's going on. And that's really a mixed bag. It's definitely a lifestyle magazine for California and they have different regions. So I just, I think the whole thing about Sunset is kind of interesting. Um, it was started in 1898 and it was really begun uh, by the railroads to promote travel West. Oh, <laughs> isn't that oh, interesting? interesting? Yeah. Oh, Sunset. Keep going. Keep going till the sun sets. Exactly. Just keep driving. Just keep driving. You'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good one. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well, and we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So uh, do you have a crush today? I do do. I've been looking for some fun podcasts to listen to. And because I'm always, you know, we're always trying to find just the best of everything, the best podcast, TV shows, magazines, decorating things, uh, things, uh, clothing. And this is a wonderful podcast. Have you heard of The Moth? I've, it, the Moth Hour, right? Is that what it's I, called? It may be called The Moth Hour. But I've it, never listened to it, but I have heard of it or seen it. I, I can kind of picture it. Well, logo. I kind of, yeah, I I kind of heard of it before, but it's it is actually quite big. I mean, they have a huge uh, following. I think they're huge. Yes, I think it's, they are. It's a very big moth, like one that my daughter would <laughs> scream if it was in her room. <laughs> anyway, it's basically. Just everyday people standing in front of a, a room a full of people. A big scary moth. <laughs> a, yeah, a big scary moth. And they're telling some story from their life. Oh, but so it's, it's like, kind of like This American Life, but not? Well, 
it, there's no commentary on it. Ah, okay. Now, This American Life is more like stories about regular people. Right. But this is the person standing up and telling their own story for maybe 10 minutes, and then they go on to somebody else. Wow. But they're all just different stories. It's just some interesting story from the person's life. And it, they're all completely different. But just think of think of hundreds of people, and they're telling the best story of their life. Wouldn't that be interesting to listen to? Yes. Well, that's kind of what it is. Wow. And okay. you know, and, and for me, I love to read, mm-hmm. but the reality is I'm not a fiction reader. I love autobiographies. Autobiographies mm-hmm. are my very favorite because I think the truth is stranger than fiction. I think because fiction, it's just somebody created that in their mind and they could ju- have just written anything. Mm-hmm. But these are things that really happen to real people in an autobiography. And that's what this is. It's a 10 minute story that happened to the person. And it was just very interesting. Wow. Um, okay. I'm going to try it. I don't know why I never tried it. Maybe I think maybe I thought it was like going to be scary or a mis- you know, like a mystery they're show not, or something. They're not scary. And I'm trying to think. One lady was uh, playing an inst- a musical instrument and she bought her metronome on the plane mm-hmm. and somehow it started ticking. Oh no! And they had to take everyone off the plane. Oh, how awful! And, and how scary they... for the people that could hear it. Right, right, right. So anyway, that's just an example. So then, yeah, but everyone knew. Then they said, "Oh no, it was just somebody with a musical instrument." But then when yeah, they got sure. off the plane, yeah, no, no, no. But the, but it was so. But everyone <laughs> knew it was someone with a musical instrument, and everyone was mad because the flight was delayed, you know, hours uh, because of this. So right. when so she got off the plane last because she wanted to no one to see her with her musical instrument because it was like a violin. <laughs> or something. <laughs> and then when she got off the plane, she had to show up at baggage claim <gasps> with her violin. So everyone then knew oh, how f- it was her. Oh, how so, awful. So there's stories like that. And then someone else, just another one that I just listened to today, someone was, uh, this woman kept wanting to see her grandmother's grave and it, the uncle never would show it to, it to her. Well, it turns out it took five years for her. It, it turns out the reason he didn't want her to see it was because her, it, the grandmother wasn't in, well, it was ashes, but they weren't buried for five years after she passed away. And that was because he had her ashes in a bag that he accidentally left on a plane and didn't get back for five years. For five years. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Don't tell my daughter that her biggest fear is having her bag lost when we fly. (laughs) If she she thought she wasn't going to get her special outfits back for five years. But he forgot it. He he forgot to get it. So if she just remembers, yeah, she'll be fine. Anyway, so I mean, they're all stories like that. I didn't mean to go down that road, but they're, they're very fascinating stories. You'll enjoy it. The Moth. Oh, okay. Good tip. All righty. Mm-hmm. Um, What's yours? I, I forgot if I told mine or not. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I like yours. Um, mine is this coffee table that I got from the Better Homes and Gardens at Walmart collection. I just can't even believe how much I like this coffee table. It's so much that I got the side mm-hmm. table too. So you guys, if you head over to my blog, you can see it over there. You can see it online. at their And what's it made website. of? It's glass with a brushed gold, a very simple brushed gold. I had a uh, feeling. Feeling that's what it was. Yeah, it's circular. Although I haven't seen it, I need doesn't to look have at it. a shelf on the bottom, which I think is just well. For I dust knew collecting. that was going to be the case, or you were going to be a little hypocrite. Yeah, exactly. So you, you got to walk the walk and talk the talk. <laughs> um, and it's eighty bucks. Come on! Oh wow, great buy. Yeah, it's really very nice. So that is my crush. I had it on the porch, then I brought it into the backyard. You can keep it inside. You can keep it outside. I mean, someone said to me on my blog, like, "What are you going to do when it snows?" I'm like. <laughs> I'm going to laugh because it doesn't snow here. Or I'm going to be very <laughs> surprised when it, when it snows because it doesn't snow here. Oh, my so goodness. So for that me, is funny. I can leave it outside most of the year. When it mm-hmm. starts to rain really hard, I would bring it in but uh, or cover it or such. But it's very functional. And I can't wait to get the um, little side table out of the box. Oh, it just very came. nice. Very nice. Yeah, that was a good one. So we have a question today, which is kind of interesting, again, that it's rifting off the conversation that we had about the enclosed sunroom with the windows. Mm -hmm. And then we had another listener, Cindy, ring in on that one. And here it is. Again, that question comes up similar, but not the same. So our listener, Jessica V, Jessica's been a longtime listener. She's getting ready to do her kitchen over. Others might have this problem too. Jessica has a kitchen window, you know, traditionally over her sink that looks out onto her sun porch, which is not 
um, insulated, or, nor does it have any you know heating or air conditioning or anything like that. It's just basically like a summer porch. Um, so she's wondering, what should she do with this window? Because it doesn't let in a whole lot of light. Uh, it looks into this other room, albeit, you know, an enclosed kind of screen porch situation, but she can also see out of the screen porch to their swimming pool. Very nice, Jessica, you have a swimming pool and she has younger kids. And so she can see the kids swimming in the pool and all that. So Jessica is making some changes to her kitchen, um, but others might be having a similar issue with an interior window that faces onto a screened porch area. So she's asking us, what do we think she should do with this window? She is moving some things around in the kitchen. Um, so she could arguably move the window, but it's not ideal. And we've got a pretty simple answer. We talked about this a few minutes uh, before we started recording today. The answer is, survey says... Do nothing. Do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it as it is, Jessica. Save that money. Go buy yourself well, a stack of magazines and, and a new pair of shoes. You know what? It's I don't think it's as big an issue as people think it is. I mean, there's so many issues we have with our homes, and I really don't think this is is a problem. No. I don't think it's a problem. And plus, I don't don't cover it up. You need to see out right. to see your kids in the pool and it's bringing light in and you can see outside. So I think windows are great, even if they are from one room to the next, unless you need privacy, leave it open, baby. Yes, I agree. And Jessica had said, well, maybe she was going to put um, shelves on it and make like an open shelf situation. I, I don't think that's a good idea because you can't take the glass away. It's not like our other situation where the adjacent room was, uh, all insulated and had air conditioning and heating. It was actually had become an enclosed part of the house. You can't take the glass out because the winter winds will be blowing in or the summer breezes or everything. So right. you'd just be putting shelves on top of then the window sash, which I think will be just way too complicated. And then what if your kid, you know, you need to see your kid or your, your neighbor's kid or something in the pool. And then you've got like knickknacks in the way on a shelf. I think it's, that's not a great solution. I think Jessica, you've got some great ideas with your kitchen. And in particular, I know it wasn't a question. You were just kind of telling us that you were going to do it. Move that fridge and put it where you want it, girl. I think that would be fine. Um, but as far as the window, I wouldn't do anything to it. Um, I keep it as simple as possible. I probably wouldn't need, I don't, I didn't think you had a, any kind of curtain or drape or shade or anything on there. I wouldn't put anything on it. Just leave it as it is. I mean, how simple is that? And the other thing is, if you eventually did in decide to enclose that porch and make it more of a four season room, then you could make it a pass through or something like that. Then you could just open it up. But for now, I would just leave it. I hope that helps. Yeah. I mean, and it's nice when the answer is easy like that. I know because we're not always telling you go buy, 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 do, 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 knock it down, replace it. You know, sometimes the answer is just, you know, you got to either deal with it, work around it. And, you know, in this situation, I think that is you know, part of the reason why we're telling you to do things. The other part of the reason we're telling you not to do anything is because the solution is not better. It's worse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. I think it's fine. It's not, I don't think it's a problem. And I just don't think this problem is a problem. I think it's fine. You've got no problem, Jessica. <laughs> go have a glass of wine. Go, yeah, go, <laughs> go get a magazine and lay down and don't worry about it. Just enjoy it. It's great. Yeah. Okay. So that was so much fun. I really enjoyed, I mean, really, honestly, I mean, to have- Can we do this again? I know, to have the opportunity. Please send us magazine you want us to review. We would love it. Uh, such fun. And uh, so nice to talk with Anita and uh, all of you today. And let us know if you have any magazines you enjoy or don't enjoy. We want to hear it all. Uh, you can contact us at decoratingtipsandtricks at gmail.com. So, and remember, we're here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. I want to remind you that we are available for design consults. We take on your design dilemmas, questions, renovations, 
any project you want to talk about, any room, any space, we are here for you. And we really do enjoy doing these. And I think we've helped people a lot. So if you want to sign up for a consult, head to the link in the show notes. It's decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. We hope to talk to you soon.